Hi, I'm Rodney, and I'm going to talk about a floppy reduction. Uh, a bunch of people put their heads together on Discord to work this out as a way of systematically solving the cube uh, after half turn reduction, and I'm going to show you what we came up with. Block building gen generally works fine in half turn reduction, but everyone's had the experience where you end up with some annoying edge permutation and it doesn't cancel, and then you try again and build different blocks, and you end up with a different edge permutation. And so floppy reduction is going to help with those cases. It's going to do it by uh, helping you set up cases where there aren't uh, obvious blocks. So if you look at something like this finish, uh, this has basically no blocks at all. Side on the side or the top it has pseudo blocks, but you know you can always be tempted to build blocks when you should be building pseudo blocks. How do you know? Floppy reduction is going to tell you. What is floppy reduction? You may ask. Uh, the floppy cube was a one layer version of the cube that was uh, built and sold. So that means it doesn't have any U moves. And so the cube is in floppy reduction when you can sol solve it using only F, R, L, and B moves. So let's talk about uh, the corner cases. How, how do you get to floppy reduction? So there are only actually four corner cases uh, and they're easy to recognize. So I'm either solved, solved means I'm in floppy reduction, or I'm a U turn away, U U two turn away from floppy reduction. So that's here's my blue reds. I'm just going to look at blue reds to identify the cases. Uh, blue reds are here and here, so obviously a U two will solve them. Uh, the key, what makes it easy, is that all the corners are either in or out together. So this move will bring not only these two but all the other corner pairs into floppy reduction. So I only have to look at one one pair to to recognize the case. Uh, so so I have solved, I have U2, I have this is F2 U2, where the, my, two, my two pairs are like this, uh, my corner pair is like that, so to solve them I need to separate them. So this is here, they're separated by a, uh, an F2 move, and the other one is R2, so here's my two, my two corners with the same color, and uh, us to solve them I split them up with an R2 and bring them together. So those are the four cases, solved, U2, F2 U2, and R2 U2. Let's talk about edge cases. You can just count the number of bad edges. It's going to be 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. So here's 0 bad edges. I'm solved. Here's 4 bad edges. 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, I can stay in 4 bad edges by putting them 2 down and 2 up in this diagonal like this. Now I, now I still have 4 bad edges after a U2 turn, so that's going to be important. Um, uh, I can have two bad edges like this, so here's two bad edges on the side, put them on the same, then a U2, I stay two bad edges, except they're on the other face now. And so there's, uh, it's very intuitive how to solve this. So to solve this, I need to, I have two bad edges, I need to split them up, and then a U-turn, and then I put it back, and it's solved. So, uh, so uh, the edges can always be solved in at most two uh, U2 turns. So corners are easy to solve, edges are easy to solve. The only trick is getting them to line up together. So just like when you get to HDR, you have to worry about fake HDR, you have to worry about fake floppy reduction. Uh, so one way you can get fake floppy redu reduction is if your corners and edges are not, uh, don't coincide. So here are, my, here are my corners are solved, but my edges are not. Uh, and if I solve my edges, I unsolve my corners, so um, my edges are uh, solved. My corners are one U turn, U two turn away from solved. So that's a fake. Uh, that's a fake. A, uh, a fake F, FR. The other thing you have to do worry about is parity. Parity, not in the normal sense, but in the sense of the number of U two turns that you need to make to solve the cube. If you have bad parity, then you get a case like this, where it looks like the edges are in floppy reduction and the corners also but you have this one pair flipped, and you have an edge, uh, an e-slice uh, pair flipped. Here's the easy way to check parity. So consider these two cor this, this set of four corners. So this is the HDR invariant tetrad, these two uh, and these two. Every, every uh, double turn swaps exactly two of those four corners. So, that, so the parity of those four as a set is the number of half turns to solve the cube, half turns of either type. Meanwhile, the parity of the E slice is the number of non U2 turns that you need to solve the cube, uh, which means that the number of U, turn, U2 turns is the combination of those two. So count the parity of, of, these, of these four as a set, count the parity of the E slice 
um, and add them together, and that's the number of U-turns that you need. So that's how you figure out parity. Okay, now we're ready to put it all together and describe how the cube looks like when it's one U2 turn away from floppy reduction. So let me just make some floppy turns and a U2 and some more floppy turns um, and look at the cube. So uh, when I'm one U2 turn away, this is the trigger state. So the trigger state looks like this. It has four bad edges, one, two, three, four in this case. Uh, it has odd parity and the corners are not solved. So check the corners first. So here's my blue red, here's my blue red, they're not solved. Uh, and my parity, let me just check my parity real quick. So this is, this is a two and this is a um, one, two, three. So two and a three, that's odd parity. So I have odd parity, unsolved corners and four bad edges. I'm one U2 turn away from uh, floppy reduction. And the way to get there, I have to say uh, I have to bring the corners, uh, the edges all to the same face in a way that's going to solve, set up the solve for the corners. So these corners are the case where they need a, uh, uh, an F2 U2 to solve, and my bad edges are 1, 2, 3. There's my last bad edge, so the F2 U2, so that means I can do a B2 U2, and now I'm in real floppy reduction. So, so you know, you, here I am. doesn't look like I built a lot of blocks. But I am, in fact, very close to, um, to solving. Uh, and the solution is always easy to find after, uh, and after, after you get to floppy reduction. Maximum eight moves, but really probably six or fewer. Here's the first example. I always start with uh, parity. So uh, here's one, two, three. That's a four cycle. And this is a one, two, three, four. So I've got even parity. Uh, what are my edges, or uh, my corners are, here's my blue red, here's another blue red, so corners need a U2, and my edges too bad. So too bad, I need to start by separating these two, make sure I don't solve the corners, or uh, yeah, so uh, uh, L2 will not solve the corners, so I'll, I'll start with that, uh, then my U2, uh, and now I need to bring this up to this face, and my corners need uh, an F2, uh, what do they need? Sorry, these are my corners. So they need an R2 to solve. So that's good because that brings that up. So that means now I'm in floppy reduction and I can finish the solve. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Here's the second example. I have, let's see, one, two, my parity is two on the corners and one, two, three, four. So that's even parity again. Uh, my corners are, let's see, where's my, here's my red uh, blues. So my corners are not solved. They require, they need an F2 U2 to solve. Uh, and, and my edges, eight, four bad on the same slice. So, uh, I need to, I can start with a U2 that won't solve the corners. Now I need to bring uh, these two uh, edges onto this face while executing a net U move. So uh, the way to do that is to use a corner swap insertion. So I can do um, uh, F2, sorry, R2, F2. That brings this one up. That sets up my corners to solve uh, so that they'll be solved after a U2. Uh, but I need to bring these up and I'm just going to do, I'm just going to do uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So that canceled, uh, that canceled too. So that was one, two, plus six, minus two. So that's a six. And, uh, and look at all the blocks I built just by doing that. Seven, eight is the solution. Here's one and last example. Uh, I'm going to check my corner parity. That's a one, that's a two cycle, uh, and no parity on the edges, so I'm at odd parity. My, uh, my corners, the, the, let's see, my edges are, I have eight bad edges, so that's going to take two U2 turns to solve. Since I have odd parity, it's going to take three U2 turns to solve. So when, I'm, when I have three, I can always just start immediately with a U2. Uh, the U2 move will be free because I entered HTR with a U move. So I might as well do that and start um, start fresh now. Okay, so now I'm at even parity. My uh, and all my bad edges 
are here on the bottom layer. So I need to execute a YouTube move while keeping four bad edges, which means I need to bring two of them up top. I have lots of choices. I can bring these two or these two or these two or these two. Um, and I'm just going to choose one that doesn't uh, uh, solve, the, solve the corners, of course, um, and that tries to preserve blocks. So here's, here's a red-green corner pair. So an F2 will solve the corners. So I need to do them uh, in order uh, that R2 needs to be last, otherwise I'll solve the corners. Uh, so if I look at the blocks here, there's a pair, there's a pair. Uh, I'm gonna, yeah, it looks like I'm gonna break something regardless. So I'm just gonna do a B2, R2, and now U2. So now I'm one away and I need to solve, I need to bring all my back edges, my bad edges to the same face. So I can bring these two up or these two down and my uh, my pair, my corners are here, so I need to end with an R. So I could do an F2, L2 to bring these two up. That's going to break these two pairs. So what I'm going to do instead is a um, B2, R2 to bring these down. Now all my bad edges are on the same face. I can do, uh, I can solve it, and there I am. So. So there you have it, floppy reduction. M more details in the doc if you want to check it out. You can use this in a few different ways. You can straight up uh, look for floppy reduction when you're solving after HTR. Uh, as you saw in the examples, you can basically linearly find a solution. And if you don't uh, break up any blocks, you're going to probably find the optimal sequence uh, to e-slice that doesn't leave HDR. Uh, another thing you could do is just use it as a way of checking whether your HDR case is good or not. If you have a two or three move uh, sequence to get into floppy reduction, then that's probably a good case. Uh, otherwise, you could just continue on. If you're gonna stick with block building, I hope uh, at least you're gonna do it with an awareness of parity uh, so that if you, if you have a two swapped edges, then you can know you can at least try to go back and build your blocks while inserting an extra U2 move uh, and solve it that way. So whatever you decide to do, hope it goes well.